Hi folks, Richard here from Catify My Home. I'm gonna show you how to train your cat to walk on a harness. Now you might wanna just skip all the steps and put your harness on your cat, go outside and hope for the best. And you might, might get lucky, but the chances are pretty high that it's gonna backfire. You're gonna go back to step one and have a negative association created with the harness, which you then need to overcome. And it's a whole lot more work. So you're actually gonna save yourself time if you just do it slow and steady and follow all the steps. If you're used to free feeding your cats, that is leaving food out all the time for them to nibble on, we're gonna to need to stop doing that because we're gonna be giving them set meals and using treats as a training tool. First thing to do is get yourself a good harness. This one just arrived through the post. I really like these harnesses. Let's have a look. Okay, this is my new harness. This is from kittyholster.com. These are great harnesses. No, I don't get any kickbacks, discounts, nothing. I've just endorsed good products when they are good, and these are the best harnesses I've ever used. Step number one, your harness came from somewhere where it was manufactured and has manufacturing smell. That's inevitable, nothing wrong with that. So step number one, throw your harness through the washing machine. That's it. So now that you've washed and dried your harness, the next step is to sleep with it for a few nights. Seriously, you want to get that familiar family scent on it. So put it under your pillow for a few nights. Squirrel, what are we doing? Oh, I love you too, sweetheart. So the next step is just to leave the harness out somewhere in an obvious spot, just so that the cats can come across it and realize that it's not a threatening object. Do that for a few days. Okay, so the next step is you want to take your harness and put it out of sight. Put it away for a few days. The next step is to grab some really high value treats that you're gonna pair with the harness. The only time that Luna sees these treats is when this harness is out. The only time she sees this harness is when she's getting these treats. Other than that, they both go away. We're trying to create a positive association with the harness by using something she already values. So let's grab the harness and the treats and go and find Mel Whip. Mugs, do you know where Luna is? No? Okay. There you are. What are you doing up there? Do you want them up there? All right. Harness up there and a couple of your favorite treats on it. Oh, there we go. Good girl. Good girl. Now the harness and the treats go away. Back in the cupboard. So that last step of giving treats on the harness, do that for a few days. And remember, put the harness and the treats away after you're done. So the next step is to get a treat that takes a lot longer to eat. Luna particularly likes this type of dry bits. And while she's eating, just open and close the clasps. Or the Velcro, or the buckles, whatever you have. So she gets used to the sound of the harness going on and off and associates it with good times. So the next step is to drape the harness over your cat while they are eating their highly valued treat and just leave it like that and let them enjoy the harness for a little while and do that for a few days every time they eat. I know! Mel Whip's favorite dry bits. So while your cat is eating their absolute favorite treat, the, the next step is, excuse me, to drape the harness over them and actually Velcro it up. There you go, sweetheart. And she's making a positive association between having the harness on and eating her treats. And before it goes on too long, undo it. There we go, sweetie pie. Have your treats. Good girl. You guessed it, that last step, just do that uh, for a few days each time just slightly extending the amount of time that you leave the harness on. Remember, we want lots of baby steps, lots of little successes, don't we, Jake? So the next step is that while your cat's eating their favorite treat, again, put the harness on them, they'll grow it up. Oh, there we go, Luna Tuna. There we go, good girl. And get the leash and get them used to the sound of the leash and clip it on. Let your cat eat for a little while. She's absolutely comfortable with it. This is what we want. 
and remove it. Do that for a few days. The next step is to give your cat their favorite treat as usual. Put the harness on them as you've been doing for the last few days so they get used to the whole, sorry Luna, so they get used to the whole procedure. And of course, get them used to the clicking sound of the leash. Attach the leash and then let them completely finish their favorite food and then let her walk around in her harness and with the leash on her and let her just get used to being in the house with her harness and leash on. Just let her get comfortable to having the harness and leash on. If she flops over on her side and rolls around, just let that happen, that's normal. And uh, just do this for a few days. You going up there? All right. You look pretty comfortable in that harness, don't you, sweetheart? So the next step is to get your cat in their harness with their leash on, eating their favorite treats right up at the door. Just get her used to doing this for a few days so she, so that she, uh, excuse me, associates the um, experience of eating her favorite treats while wearing the harness and leash by the door. All positive. So the next step is to take your cat just outside with their favorite treat down on the ground. Look at that, she runs outside. She's like, I'm comfortable being just outside the door. And before she gets upset or distressed or nervous or something, um, go back in. But uh, Mal Whip's pretty cool about new experiences, so I think she'll be fine out here for a bit. And that's it. Do this for a few days and go back in, of course. So you have your leash. Here's a tip. You never want to hold it like that. You don't even want to hold it like that. Put your hand through, grab the leash, pull the cover down, and put your hand back through so you have a slip knot. That way, even if the cat pulls and, you, and you're not holding anything, even if your cat pulls, it always goes tighter around your wrist. Here I am at my front door. So make up a song and sing it every time you put your cat in the harness and go out for a W-A-L-K. It really works. Soon they learn the song and they'll come running. Watch this. Walkie walk, 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 walkie walk. Here's another tip one cat per person. Um, I've tried in the past to great disaster to take out more than one cat at a time. Great, you're outside, you're walking your cat. You've got your leash set up in a slip knot and everything's going well. Please get off your cell phone. Don't be staring at your cell phone. Watch the environment all around you all the time while you're walking your cat. There are people walking dogs. I love dogs. I used to train dogs. I used to own dogs. I love them, okay? But when a dog appears on the scene, your cat becomes prey and they're going to freak out. And that's the kind of thing you don't want when they're in a leash when they're outside. So as soon as you see a dog, scoop your cat up, go inside. Also, there are people around that don't like cats, so watch out for weirdos. Also, there are bad drivers, okay? So watch out for motorbikes, watch out for cars, watch out for things like that. There are also poisonous plants, so watch what your cat is nibbling on and rummaging around in and chewing. When you're outside, just be aware of what your cat is munching on. Luna's munching on some wild grass here. That's perfectly safe. I know it doesn't have um, chemical fertilizer, pesticide, fungicide, miticide, or anything like that on it. Um, just be aware of what plants have been treated with, what chemicals, when you're outside. And also, if you don't know what kind of plant it is, if in doubt, don't let your cat munch on it. There are plenty of poisonous plants out there that are no good for your cat to munch on. So Luna and I are out for a bit of a walk. I love you too, sweetheart. So we've got a double leash set up, so just two leashes. And as you can see, this one is just looped around itself. So the idea here, a um, couple of leashes are good, 
uh, bungee leash is really good but if you can't get one just use two standard leashes now the point I wanted to show you apart from that was when you want your cat to stop going somewhere never pull on the leash to drag them back just keep the leash taut keep it taut and they will soon figure out that's the limit of how far I can go now there's nothing special about being up on a wall here she's just particularly acrobatic so we'll just keep going and we'll show that again so you don't want to be yanking the leech to get your cat to come back from somewhere so I want her to know that here is the absolute limit so I'm just going to hold the leash she goes taut she has a bit of a look around I keep it taut she has a bit more of a look around and she's going to soon double back because she knows this is as far as she can go I'm deliberately not calling her so there you go see she just figured out for some reason in the environment that's as far as I can go and she's back where you want her to be this is particularly useful when a cat's trying to go underneath a car or something like that so my 15 minute timer just went off on my phone so now I sing the we're going home song sing a song and you can soon learn to recognize it soro soro kaeru no soro soro kaeru yo ie ni iku kimi to soro soro so Luna gets it that it's the the uh, we going home song and sometimes she just needs a little bit of encouragement did you find a fly boom boom good girl